You know, living life out on the open road might not be such a bad idea. You get to explore new places, meet new people, and just experience what is around you. I just have one reservation, and that is about going to the bathroom. If you do not have access to a toilet, your options are either nature itself or this. <sighs> what is up, everybody? Random, random man here bringing you another video during this current quarantine era. I hope everyone out there is continuing to stay safe and be well during this unpredictable time as I am here bringing you my review for Nomadland. Based on the 2017 nonfiction book of the same name, written by Jessica Bruder, the plot of this drama basically follows Fern, played by Frances McDormand, a woman in her 60s who, after losing everything in the Great Recession, embarks on a journey through the American West, living as a van-dwelling modern-day nomad. Going into this movie, I was very much looking forward to seeing it. This film got a lot of buzz out of the film festivals that it premiered at. In fact, it is the first movie to ever win the top film festival prizes at both Venice and Toronto, winning the Golden Lion and the People's Choice Award, respectively, at those festivals. And that increased my hype on top of me being interested in the filmmaker at the helm and the lead actress at the center. That said, filmmaker at the helm here is Chloe Zhao, whose previous effort, The Writer, I watched for the first time last week and loved it. I was very much into her filmmaking style and was really intrigued to see what she would do with another similarly small and intimate concept like Nomadland. And then, of course, the main actress here, Frances McDormand, also had me anticipating the film. She is one of the best film actresses ever, in my opinion. I was lucky enough to be able to see this movie courtesy of Film at Lincoln Center's Virtual Cinema. Shout out to my friend Izzy for letting me know about this. They were offering uh, rental screenings for $12 a ticket and I was able to snag myself a screening for this film and I am so lucky to be able to have done so. So without further ado, let's get into talking about this film, starting out with the cast and their performances. We have Frances McDormand in the lead role of Fern. As I said before, I think she is one of the best film actresses ever. And here in Nomadland, she surprises very little in the way of her showing off her accomplished acting and talents all around because this is one of her absolute best performances that I've seen from her. This could also be saying something for some because she is already a two-time Academy Award winning actress, having won for Fargo and most recently two years ago for three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. But here in Nomadland, compared to those performances, this is a much more understated role that she is taking. And with her being in about every scene, if I recall correctly, she is a total force in front of the camera, whether it is subtly just in her expressions and anything that she is doing, or if it's with her natural interactions with the other characters that she meets along the way, this is someone who is able to show a lot of humanity within her. Simply put, McDormand masterfully magnifies all the screen time that she has and truly gives one of the film performances of the year. And as for the rest of the actors in this film, there's only one other high profile name in this movie, and that is David Strathern, who plays a fellow nomad to Fern and pops up a lot across this film. And I thought he gave a strong performance as well. I thought the rapport that he had between himself and McDormand's Fern was there, and a lot of this movie just felt so natural within the character interactions, also supplemented by the fact that real nomads are featured in this film, which is interesting to note because the various people that show up here who are nomads in real life are essentially and authentically playing themselves right down to keeping their names intact for the film, like Linda and Swanky, just to name a couple people. This also directly goes into the style of film making that Chloe Zhao 
implements in this film. Here, Zhao serves as this film's director, writer, editor, and one of its producers, so it's clear that this is a movie directly from her mind, and her fingerprints are all over this movie's DNA, too, because going into how she helms this movie, it is clear that she is someone who loves going at the humanistic level of characters that she wants to present here, with, of course, Fern specifically at the center. And that is also what she did with her previous movie, The Rider, which is about a real-life rodeo rider who endured brain damage but still has a drive and passion to want to ride again, even if it means that his life could end with that continuation of his passion. For all of that and more, I loved how Zhao was able to handle the writer's subject matter. So similarly, in much of the same praise with Nomadland, a lot of the presentation of this movie as a true character study is shown right off the bat. Before the movie's events begin, it is made clear that the small town that Fern was living in had their mainstay factory closed down, affecting a lot of the people who lived there so much to the point where the town's zip code was entirely retired. Then after that bit of text is given, we do see Fern pack whatever she has up and embarks on this journey through the country while living in her van, and that is what we see across the running time of this movie. A year in the life or so of Fern uh, just adopting this lifestyle. She is seen uh, at one point working for Amazon. She also works at a rest stop place, a restaurant, what have you. We just see her go around the country and experience either new places, new people, all of that. To some, I could see this movie being called aimless or just not amounting to much in terms of us seeing a slice of life of someone just going through whatever the movie wants to present. But I could not disagree more with that because of what Zhao does behind the camera and handling it with such supreme soulfulness across it. This is a movie that really gets you into our main character's head. It gives us a sense of both loneliness that she may feel, also given the fact that before the movie's events begin, she is a widow, her husband had passed away, and also just seeing a sense of wonder in the world around Fern, in where she stops and just takes in whatever she sees. With that, I surprisingly was into this movie way more than I initially thought I was going to be because in the back of my mind before switching this movie on, I knew I was going to be engaged somewhat because of Frances McDormand at the helm, but it really did captivate me all across it just to see whatever she would do next or also the possible dangers and risk of her living as this modern-day nomad, or as another character later on describes her, as a modern-day pioneer. And yeah, the pioneers back then in American history had to rough it out. But yeah, what Fern and other nomads are doing here is in the same spirit of what the pioneers did centuries ago. And it goes into a lot of the commentary and thematic elements that this movie presents too, because it does give a spotlight on a section of America that is pretty much forgotten in some way or with older people as McDormand is portraying here are just discarded in some way, just like how her town really did just disappear essentially. So rather than just have her stay someplace where she can be alone and not have people around her, it is that core mentality, that core mantra that Fern has in going about and exploring whatever she can with what she has adopted as her new lifestyle. It is also due to the technical elements of this film because this is cinematography wise one of the most beautiful movies I have seen all year. Even though I was watching it on my 65 inch TV in my living room it really had me appreciate a lot of the intricacies that were done in front of and behind the camera with how it moved. Many times we just have shots focusing on McDormand's Fern walking around the nomad camps that she would stay at or just have her experience her surroundings and atmosphere around her, like as if the camera is floating and just being a companion aside to her. 
And it really evoked a lot of the same sensibilities that I would see in a Terrence Malick movie. And even with how the movie does feel like a docu-style drama, sometimes it did feel like it was shot like a documentary, which only further backed up the realism that is played up across the film here. And with all the other supplementary elements too, like the music, the way Zhao herself edited this thing, and everything from its pacing being just about perfect in running over an hour and 45 minutes in length, this movie really made me feel like I was experiencing someone else's life through the duration of it. Ever since I finished watching this film, it just would not leave my mind, which is a testament to everything it did and also getting me really emotionally suckered in to what was happening here. And given that this year has been difficult on just about everyone, no matter if you have been directly affected by the pandemic or not, this movie I think is a reminder and a very fitting one to have come out this year to show that even if life gets rough, whether on your own terms or for anything out of your control, there's always something in there, a glimmer, of something to make you feel compelled to just try to live in the best way you possibly can. So with all of that being said, and it is with statements like this one I'm about to make that I do not make lightly in me saying that this film is an utter cinematic masterpiece. I can see people not being into this movie, whether they are expecting just something traditional or just something that would have a beginning, middle, and end like any other movie with conflict that they are used to. But it is with filmmakers like Chloe Zhao and what she did previously with The Writer and with Nomadland that she really has a knack and a true interest and passion in showing people everywhere, no matter what their background is or who they are. This, I think, is what film has always been meant to show. And that is why I feel this is the absolute best movie I have seen in 2020 thus far. It is something I hope more and more people are able to see. I know that this is going to get a wider theatrical release here in the U.S. on February 21st. We'll see how that goes, given how uh, the situation in the country and the world at large is going right now. But if you do get the chance to see Nomadland, take it, because the hype that this movie has been getting really is real to me. I adore this film. I cannot recommend it more highly enough. My final verdict for Nomadland is five out of five stars. Thank you all, as always, for watching. Be sure to like this video, comment on what you thought of Nomadland. Social media links in the description. Subscribe to my channel for more, and I'll catch you on the next movie review.